Um, been uh, been an interesting summer for sure, and one that is, I think, overall um, the, the most unique we've had, just because of um, you know our team. We we didn't really know what our team was going to look like for the bulk of the summer, and that's normal. Uh, it's 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 not always normal, but it was normal this year with the change in the NBA draft deadline, everything being backed up a month, having a couple guys that are obviously uh, were, were really key, uh, key players for us that were going through that process. Um, as well as we had, you know, we had a, a couple guys in USA basketball. Um, we've had some normal kind of end of the year uh, injuries that, that where guys had surgeries that they had to recover from and then some, uh, a few more things uh, that I, I won't get specific with that have, that have limited some guys. So it's really been a, a unique summer. I think it's going to make a real priority for us to have uh, a great fall here moving forward. But uh, uh, it's been great to finally get our, our group together. It's been really, really exciting to get our team together here um, really since July. Uh, we've had our, our, the team uh, intact minus, uh, minus one player. So we're re it's been really exciting. It's been great working with them. We've, we have, this week is our final week, and then they'll go back home for a few weeks. So um, again, fall will be really important. I will say one, make one announcement. Kalen Etzler, we're going to redshirt Kalen Etzler this year. So uh, the young man has uh, uh, had a great conversation. I think it's something he's looking forward to, as is his family. And, uh, um, you know, looking forward to his, his development moving forward. So I'll let you guys ask questions here, and we'll talk a little more about the summer. Adam, go ahead and get started with the bouncer. Well, like you said, you couldn't you know your team until July. You got all that time and trying to make, make plans for the future. Uh, what were you able to plan for while you were waiting on decisions? And then once you, like you said, kind of know your team now, were you able to start figuring out that you look ahead to the fall? Yeah, you know, we couldn't do a whole lot, um, to be honest with you, Adam. We, um, <clears throat> because we had some guys that were still hampered by a few, a few injuries and, um, and then those guys being out, um, what we did is a lot of individual one-on-one -on -one skill work, which we didn't get to a whole lot of team stuff here until July, which is a little bit later than we normally would. Um, but, again, that was, that was a process with EJ and Dwayne that we were – um, you know, going to see that through, and we supported them seeing that through. Um, that is something they both wanted to do. Their families both wanted to do it. We fully supported it. We were going to we were going to let that, them see that through. Um, and and they, by no means did they hold our summer hostage. It's just uh, it, it was uh, that combination along with USA basketball just made it a unique unique summer. Yeah, no, that's really important. I think one of the things you, you look at a guy like, um, I think guys have really gotten better uh, um, every year they've been here. And a big part of that, we believe, is is the development in the summer. You look at like Andre West and his numbers, they're inarguable how much better he got. And he deserves a ton of credit for that. Uh, the shooting element in our program, it's, it's inarguable. Guys shoot it better from one year to the next. Um, and their efficiency improves. And that's, I think, in large part because of our summer development program. It's been really good. You know, Dwayne, um, I'm excited about what this week could potentially be for him. The young man was a, um, a good player coming out of high school. Ryan Peden did a great job recruiting him. He was a three-star, but he just kept getting better. And we thought if he, if he did decide to return, I think he'd take another step forward. So the summer's been really important. Um, in just specific skill development and trying to determine what each guy needs. Clint. Hey, Clint. I saw Jared DeSollinger yesterday. I think he's taken a somewhat serious interest in coaching. He wants to be in college or pro. I don't know if you've had a discussion. He wants to coach the big men here at some yeah. point. Uh, what would be your advice? Uh, I don't know if you've had that around. Well, if he's thinking about going into coaching, I'd ask him to reconsider. Yeah. Um, I'm kidding. Um, uh, Jared, 
uh, is tremendous. Yeah, Jared's tremendous. Um, I think that he's he's got a tremendous, as we knew, J Jared wants to continue playing for a little while longer, I understand. Um, and then in college, the unique thing is he's, he's got to finish his, his, his degree here. But uh, he brings a wealth of knowledge, a great feel for the game. Um, and it's been, it's been fun watching him. I think he took over for Scooney, what, three years ago maybe? So the three years that he's been doing it um, uh, with that team, it's been really fun. He, you know, they came around for Pro Week. Um, so I love Jared and love what he brings. I think he's got a really bright future if he does decide to be a, a professional uh, college or high school coach. I think he's got a very bright future, and it's in his bloodlines, as we all know. Yeah, he's going to be almost exclusively at the four, um, and and we we've, we've said that really since the end of the the season that that has been our intent uh, all along. Because you know one of the things that I think people have, have maybe forgotten a little bit about is we you know Zed Key had a really good freshman year, and um, he is a he's a big guy. He's maybe not quite as tall as, but he's a big guy and got great length. Plays with great length. Plays much bigger than he is. So we also always assumed that Zed was going to play more minutes um, uh, as he, you know, as he moves forward in his career, obviously. So moving EJ, I think it's best. Uh, at the end of the day, it's best for EJ. It's best for his development. Having said that, he played offensively the four last year. That's what he did. Um, he he, uh, we we played him inside now, but but that's exactly how he played offensively. I think. Uh, for him, it's about having some more uh, defensive uh, ability and versatility. He's got to show that. Uh, the teams that we spoke with really did not, the NBA teams, um, really felt like his offensive game um, in a lot of ways could use some. They, they talked about his shooting and his ball handling a little bit, but uh, he played very much a, a kind of a perimeter forward type position. He, we certainly posted him some. He'll continue to do that because he's so good at it. But he's, he's going to exclusively uh, play the four. There could be some times where we, uh, we mix it up with him and Kyle. But uh, uh, yeah, I think for him, um, you know, he's going to be played against, in some cases, a smaller guy uh, or a guy his size that might be able to move a little bit better. Uh, so that's just going to put a premium on his his ball skills improving and adding some things to his game. And when you look at the, the front court, I mean, you just have a lot of guys, whether it's Dead, Joey, Seth, EJ, Kyle, and then you know, the three of uh, yeah. Justice, Eugene. How do, you, how do you figure out how to best figure out some sort of rotation when you have so many veteran guys who I, who I assume are all going to play? Yeah. You know, I, I think, Colin, that, that that's not unique to us. Um, if you look at rosters in our league, or if you look at rosters in the top programs that are in the top, say, 25 or 20 in the country, most of them this year have 13, some have 15 scholarship players that all, in essence, kind of think they're going to play. So there's, this is not unique to us. This is a byproduct of what we all know, the super seniors that are coming back. Uh, it's created uh, more depth. Um, I think it's too early to tell right now because we really haven't spent a whole lot of time together as a team. We'll, we'll have a better feel for that really in September, um, in October after our first scrimmage. Um, and then early in the season, we'll have a better feel. I, it's hard to make any statements right now beyond the proven guys we have in our program. Um, it's beyond the – it, I can't really make any statements about where I would – or where we would position guys. Yeah. Uh, how do you maybe balance what's best for him and what's best for you guys? Well, he and I will have that conversation, but we're, I think he can still play to his advantage and have strengths at that position. He played mostly the four his freshman year, um, mostly the four. It was just last year where, we, where he, he played more towards the end of the season but he, he played a little bit more and was it was really who he was defending, right? Um, 
So I think there will be times where he'll be able to guard a four, but I think he'll be played by a five some, uh, which will still give him give him a real advantage. But I think if, whether he's guard, guarded by a four or a five, um, you know, I think in in EJ's case, he's got to find a way to utilize his his advantage um, in whatever matchup that is. And you're right; it's one of the things last year he really, really benefited from because he had a, he had a, I think he had a advantage going into almost every game. He just was an impossible guard, um, and I think he's going to be hard to guard again. But you're right; he's going to be guarded by a more mobile. In some cases, you put him out there with Zed and Joey; he's going to be guarded with a more mobile by a more mobile guy. I think the challenge will be when he's out there with Kyle, how are they going to match up? You know, that, that, that could be uh, something we, we look at. No, he's not injured. Yeah, he's not injured. It was, when we recruited him, we had that conversation. So that was a, that was a conversation, you know. Yeah. I think it really helped. I think last year really helped Michi. Really helped him. Uh, he's had a good summer. Um, he's had a good summer. And, uh, you know, I'm excited about uh, what, what this year can be for him. You know, I'm excited about our young guards. Um, I think they're going to be young. They're going to go through growing pains for sure, but I'm excited about our young guards um, that we have, in, including Malachi. And w there'll certainly be times where we play a lot of three-guard lineups this year. Yeah, they, they really have been out most of the summer just with, with, with dealing with, um, you know, surgery and, and um, some, some other things. Uh, with um, health-related things, nothing significant with, with Seth. They're just now getting back to where they're, they're fully cleared. But, um, you know, obviously Jimmy had a pretty significant sur uh, surgery there on his shoulder. Yeah, I'm yeah, really excited about Malachi and really excited about his, you know, his growth and his future moving forward. He's he's young, you know, he's young for his class and um he's still got a he's still got a young frame. Um you you can tell he's got to get stronger, he's got to get more more physical. I think his leg strength, his upper body strength, all that has to take step for, steps forward, but he's such a tremendous kid. Um, and he's he's got really good uh, size and length. His wingspan's about six nine at six four. Um, uh, he's, his ball skills have, have continued to grow and improve. Um, you know, in high school he kind of played all over really for for, for their team. Um, uh, he'll play more of you know either guard wing spot uh, here primarily. But really excited about what he can be. I, I think he'll look like a freshman at times, and then he'll look like. A guy who's, uh, you know, a tr has a tremendous future at times. That's the the natural development for for young players. Chris, going back to DJ, a couple of people I talked to about it, especially looking forward to that big experience. You mentioned his handles, and you brought that up. How much is that a focus for you guys? And going back to Bill's question, kind of what you need him to do, but what he needs to develop if he wants to play at the next level. Do you guys want him to focus on that, or, or does he need to continue to be more of a focus? Yeah, for, for EJ, the, the feedback we got from, from NBA teams was um, r really it was it, the, the things they two things they hit on the most was was uh, sh consistent shooting, defensive versatility. Um, the, the ball handling piece was kind of third uh, in their mind, they, or at least from the people we talked to. So I think that's an important skill for him to continue to grow in and improve in. But the other two areas, I think, for his development – are most important in most of the NBA teams we talked about. I think it's those three things, really. Um, you know, he's got to, he's probably got to continue to um, improve his, his body. Um, but uh, shooting, defensive versatility, and then uh, ball handling. With Wade on, the, the impact Cedric can have, I mean, have seen his numbers and seen what he's done against Baylor. Yeah. What, what did you guys like? 
Well, we, you know, we didn't, even though he came in after Dwayne, it's not like we brought him in as, quote unquote, the replacement for Dwayne. Um, I think Cedric's going to have to figure out this level and the challenges at this level, um, all of those things. But I, I do think that um, he's got a real ability to, to make shots. He's proven that throughout his career. And I think when you look at what he's done and what he particularly did last year um, against high-level competition, it, uh, we just felt like it particularly kind of at the one-two, the, the ball handling positions, we, we could have – we could use – you know, we needed another another guard. So um, we'll see. I'm excited. He he's graduating, so he's not here. Uh, he's graduating. He'll be here once he graduates. Chris, are you watching with interest this talk of uh, realignment, conference realignment? Um, do you have any suggestions for your conference? Um, would you, would, would you they listen to my suggestion, Clay? Maybe. Okay. Um, this is the place probably to give it then with all the cameras here. Okay, I hope Kevin Warden's watching. Um, I, I, I haven't. We've really been busy recruiting, to be honest with you. I, I was, I was on the road this weekend, and you started to hear it. I was watching a game. Um, uh, I was watching a game Saturday morning, and I had a, a media guy say next to me, "Hey, do you know uh, such and such is about to join the Big Ten? I thought he was joking. Um, and then there was a coach on my left and a media guy on my right, and, and they got to talking about it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'll have conversations with, with Gene, um, you know, if I have questions or, or concerns, but it's really not something I've, I've given a lot of. Th We've certainly talked about it up in the offices, um, and uh, those are, those are high-level decisions that, um, you know, at some point I'll have a conversation with Gene about it, I'm sure. Well, you know, obviously our, our CJ was tremendous for us. CJ Walker did a lot of really, really good things for us. He and Dwayne, uh, I thought, had, had really good years. I think uh, we knew we were going to probably lose, as the season went on, we thought we definitely could lose, lose Dwayne. Um, and we knew where, where CJ, uh, CJ was going to be moving on. So we needed, you know, we needed uh, some veteran um, Guys, and I think Jamari was the first one. I mean, I, Jamari's been really good. He's been an everyday guy in these workouts. Um, he has brought a competitiveness and a defensive approach that I think we need. He's got to improve in some things defensively, but we all know his ball hawking is tremendous. And he competes. He really competes on that end. So, um, you know, he was important for us, and he's just brought a, a real – everyday approach to his to his work which has been I think important when you have um, you know some some young perimeters yeah we've <clears throat> the fall is going to be really important for us on that um, and um, you know, we, we've certainly looked at it as coaches. The, you don't want to overcorrect, Adam, because our defense has been consistently really good. It's typically been a top 20 defense in the country. Um, so I, I want to be careful not to overcorrect. It would, if it was a pattern, it would probably be a, a, a different story. Uh, but this has not been a pattern, um, you know, of, of, of our teams typically, da dating back to Butler. Um, and I think, I think for us, you know, you look back and you look, and we are going to change some things. We are going to change how we play, uh, some defensively. Um, uh, we've, we've, we've committed to doing that. But I think the biggest thing is looking at, looking at our personnel or some things we need to address. And then um, uh, I think collectively uh, our conversation as a group, our buy-in has to be great on that end. You know, listen. I, I think um, uh, it's 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 a real question. But as I mentioned, this is this is pretty common right now. You, if you look at rosters, I could pull up you know the teams that are projected to win 
uh, our league right now, and you would see 13, 14 scholarship players. This is not just unique to us. I think that you got to have conversations, but at the end of the day, it's a, it is going, it is a competitive, you know, business that we're in. And um, at the end, at the end of the day, I think we'll see guys that really kind of rise to the occasion, and uh, uh, whatever is given to them will, will be earned. Um, I, I understand you can't play, you know, 12, 13 guys. Um, I think that's that's not realistic. At some point, our rotation, uh, well, it might be a little bit bigger this year. At some point, uh, at, in the, as the season progresses, maybe it'll be tailored down a little bit. But uh, we've got a lot of work between now and then. And at the end of the day, I think players realize uh, that they, they're, they're going to have to earn their playing time. Yeah. You wanted to make his move just, just in case, you know, if, if he was, if, if he didn't have them, you know, maybe that's an issue that he might have. Yeah, and it helped that Tony had recruited him and knew him. I think that that was uh, that was a, a, a part of this. There was a couple other guys, honestly, that we were recruiting that we just we felt like um, Cedric would be a better fit, maybe because he wouldn't be as as ball dominant. Uh, potentially, so you're always having those conversations, um, and uh, you know I think there was a lot of discussion on that once we realized Dwayne was 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 going to move on. You know, it it is. I, I I have to be honest. The the idea that we were a little bit banged up, more than a little bit banged up, going into the end of the year last year, and you could certainly look to four games in four days and what that did to our bodies physically but I, I do think as your as a coach I, I probably would be lying if I didn't say that didn't factor in some to just I just felt like we were we were a little bit thinner than than we needed to be and some of that was you know some really unique circumstances with Abel going down at the start of the season and then, uh, and then other injuries that happened but uh, I, I, I think I'd be honest saying that was a factor Yeah. I think I think I'm interested to see um, as a group once we get everybody together and once we spend time together um, because we have we have certainly a lot of guys uh, we've had we've had great continuity from last year to this year in terms of our roster I think we're top 10 percent in the country in terms of our continuity we, when you look at across college basketball we've had tremendous continuity. Um, in our roster, um, I think the so you have certainly a lot of guys who've been a part of that, who were a part of that experience, and it's something we've talked about and we'll continue to talk about. Um, as I said, we'll you know you have to lean into extreme disappointment in life and let it hopefully um, use it. So uh, I'm, I'm anxious to see for us m moving forward. Um, kind of what that whole moment means for us as a group. Um, you know, I, I think for us, we, we've had three postseason NCAA tournament opportunities in, because of the COVID year in our four years. And two of the three years where we probably weren't predicted to go to the tournament, we performed really well. We didn't last year. And um, I'm anxious to see how that uh, – how we use that moving forward. This is a team that externally at least has some pretty high expectations. Do you lean into that as well? Do you talk to the guys about what is being said? I mean, obviously they hear things, but you know, how much do you, when, when you have a team that increases in top of the or whatever you guys end up being, how much do you talk about that, address handling expectations with guys that maybe haven't had to do this at this level? I mean, we, we just haven't seen a team like this on the year. Yeah. Um, I, listen, I think that those conversations may come, um, but I think we're a far ways away from that. And you've heard me talk about this idea of just staying in the moment every day. 
you know, it's Bob Gibson's line, the most important pitch is strike one. Um, I just think it's that's that's where we're at right now. It is the idea of just what's next. Let's make sure that next thing we're doing as well as we can. Um, we'll get to that at some point, um, but I think we're we're a long ways away from that. I'm sure this is because of the super seniors. I, I don't think our Sweet 16 team um, a couple years ago I think had. Five, maybe five, five, maybe. I think that our Sweet 16 team had uh, maybe five. That would have been the most. That was in 17, 18, or whatever that was, 16, uh, 17. Um, so this would be the most. Yeah. Yeah, I think old matters. What when I said that initially, what what I really meant was, uh, I I think old matters. It does matter. I think it really does help too if you're old and and um, uh, experienced together. I think that really uh, helps your team. You look at Baylor this year; they were they were old. Um, you look at a lot of teams, but again, that doesn't mean that that uh, we're always going to have young players. We're always going to play young players. I don't, we'll, we'll never have a, we won't ever have another roster like this, ever. There, there will never be a time where we have another roster like the one we have right now. It's just, it's a blend of a lot of, we were already going to be pretty old, and then you have uh, a guy like Kyle Young who, you're, come on, Kyle, you're a pretty special player, man. <laughs> like, the last thing I'm doing is saying, no, nah, you know, I think, Kyle, maybe something, there's a better, no, come on back, Kyle. Uh, we missed you. So, um, so we'll have another. We'll never have a, another roster like this. Yeah, I don't know if I was shocked because Kyle loved. Listen, and in, in, in the same is true with Dwayne, even though Dwayne has left. But legacy matters. It mattered to EJ and his decision, and it matters to Kyle. And again, it mattered to Dwayne too. Dwayne just made a decision that that I think. Uh, was was it was a solid decision, but legacy in their decisions really mattered in both EJ and Kyle's decision. It mattered. So when when you hear guys talk about, hey, I wanna I wanna go out and be able to leave an imprint and be remembered and be remembered for um, um, doing something significant and playing a specific way and accomplishing something. Uh, I'm not saying that that's a, a rarity with today's athlete, but it's not, it's not always common. Um, and, and for those two guys, I do think um, it was a factor in both their decisions. Yeah. 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 Um, boy, I hope he can avoid elbows. Uh, you know, that would be tremendous if he could see some of those coming. Uh, we, we did it last year, Bill, with him. We did um, a, it practice. We had a whole plan in place for him because of his legs. Um, his legs actually are feeling the best they felt um, really in a couple years. Uh, so I, I do think we could, you know, he's never played more than 25 minutes. So I, I do think we could, to, to make sure that he is ready at the end of the year, um, I do think we could utilize the idea of just watching his minutes throughout the year. And um, whether that's load management or, or, or looking at his, his practice habits, um, he's going to do everything you ask him to. So we've really tried to manage that. We'll, we'll continue to do that. Is it easier to care about your legacy if you can make some money off your name? Sure. Yeah. Uh, was that a factor? He be, he could answer for it, but I think so. Why um, in general? Do you see that? How that for, in some guys moving forward? Uh, sure. Yeah. I think I think um, 
I think it's uh, it doesn't mean that that one trumps the other in their minds. They're the only ones that could tell you that. But I think uh, the idea that they get to take advantage and actually profit off their own name or image or likeness um, uh, is is going to really benefit and and make it potentially a tougher decision for certain uh, kids. Um, uh, guys that maybe are in a specific category of, of potentially being drafted or not being drafted. I still think you'll see the trend that's continued in the last five to eight years in college basketball where young men will continue to professionalize as soon as they see the real opportunity for that. That's just where it's headed. That's where it's been. There's, there's no, it's just like you know, people who get shocked about you know, transfers all the time like that. That ship sailed 10, 15 years ago in college basketball. Same things. The game's different. But will name, image, and likeness impact some decisions? I think they will. I'm surprised. It's take, how long does it take before I got the first question? Yeah. Yeah, I was prepared. It was number one right here. JTT, right? Did you expect him to play at all? And did you scout him at all? Did you know what he would bring to the yeah, we've seen him, um, and we, we haven't seen him live, but we've seen him on film. We watched him a little bit, um, and, uh, you know, listen, I, I think we're a ways away from him stepping onto a court. Um, Ryan and I will have conversations. Um, you know, it, it'll, I'm sure ultimately will come down to, to what the young man and his family really want to do. Um, I met with him when he was here. We had breakfast, you know, beautiful kid, beautiful family. Uh, he's a good player. He's a good player. Uh, but, um, you know, I'm not going to stand in the way of a national championship or a first, first round pick, what, first pick, I guess. I want to follow up on, on that sort of, not, there are other people who have dual sport offers yeah. from you guys in your class. I know you can't talk about it individually. There's another one who just got three Mac offers this week who are football first prospects. How do you feel about the concept of, of dual offers and guys who are huge targets for football teams but yeah. also maybe want to play basketball? Well, I, I think if, if they – uh, have conversations with us, which they have. The football staff has conversations with us and said, hey, this young man has genuine interest in it. Um, we're open to it. Uh, they understand those conversations are always ongoing. But if they ask us to meet with a young man, which they have, um, because he has interest in basketball, um, we'll have conversations. We just had another one this past weekend uh, while we were on the road uh, 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 with a, a potential dual sport player, uh, maybe who you're mentioning. Um, so we'll gladly, you know, I think one of the, the coordination between both staffs in recruiting, they've met with some of our guys. We don't have any dual sport players over there. Uh, but but we, they've met with our guys on occasion. There's great coordination between both staffs. We love them. Ryan and I will be talking specifically about, about JT's situation, I'm sure, as we get closer to it and decide what's, what's best for him. Yeah, that's not happening. Yeah, Jake's been fantastic. Uh, he's been he's been a tremendous uh, asset, a tremendous hire. Um, you know, when when I hired him, I, I really was talking through. You know, he had went through a really challenging situation at Vandy, where they didn't win an SEC game, um, and I thought it spoke a lot about him during that whole process. Just how he handled the whole interview process. Um, uh, in, in a really good way. He's been phenomenal. Tremendous work ethic. I think with Ryan Peden and Jake and Tony, um, I, I just I really believe this is a tremendous staff, a high-level staff. Um, really excited about the addition of, of Tony. But, um, yeah, we, we have what I think is, is a potential class, um, and keep your Twitter fingers handy in the next couple of days. I think we have a potential class 
uh, that that is one that you've you've kind of um, worked towards um, uh, building. And and I just I'm really excited about really the last couple years. We just haven't had brought in quite the numbers um, uh, because we for, you know we haven't needed to with all that we're losing. We need to bring in a, a, a really solid uh, class that can impact things. And, um, um, you know, I'm excited about that. Really excited about it. Yeah, I heard that. Um, Listen, it, it, we'll talk about it more as we get closer, but uh, um, it, they're a great opponent. And um, I'm excited about the, the, the atmosphere, the environment that's going to be here um, because they're a tremendous school, tremendous opponent, and obviously uh, one of the greatest coaches our game has seen. So um, uh, looking forward to it. Um, but uh, to quote Bob Gibson again, let's, we just got to get to get to practice number one. But that'll be a great opportunity. A couple more. Any any other ones? Yeah, bye. Jake. Yep. Yep. That'll be Jake Diebler. Yep. I I decided that uh, pretty early. Yeah, it'll be Jake. Okay, guys. All right. Be well.